dollars or thousands of dollars or even tens of thousands of dollars, I think. I couldn't even begin to uh, imagine how many papers are here. I don't know if they're worth more than a buck or two. Betting on an abandoned storage container is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Rags or riches, it's always a gamble. But today, we're going to be talking about 8 storage wars, insane scores. If that intro made you cringe just a little, leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content. Now let's jump right into the list. Barry Weiss, who recently left the show to film his own spin-off series, Buried Treasure, had never been interesting in bidding on storage units until his friend approached him. Though he was not very experienced, Weiss made a profit in the first season after bidding $275 on a unit filled with salon equipment. What at first appeared to be a bust turned into a major victory when Weiss found a model grand piano out of the mess. With it, he turned a nice $11,625 profit, which likely contributed to him staying with the show for so long, causing him to continue bidding on some more storage units and setting his legacy on the show as a whole. That if you if you were to sell this piece, you could be getting possibly ten, twelve thousand dollars to the right collector. Former Storage Wars regular David Hester was the buyer everyone loved to hate, which is understandable for everything he had done throughout his time on the show. He was known for driving up prices of storage units if he knew a fellow buyer was eyeing it, and was confrontational in general. Much to his competition's dismay, Hester was a pretty lucky buyer. Case in point, in the first season, Hester bid $750 on a storage unit filled with old newspapers. It doesn't sound like a jackpot, but they turned out to be limited edition Elvis Presley newspapers, valued at $90,000. Lord have mercy. You have the press, scimitar, and then you have the commercial appeal. I have two papers per bundle. It turns out instead of 3,000 newspapers, I have 6,000 newspapers. Brandy Fasanti and Jared Schulz are the rookies of Storage Wars. More often than not, they end up losing more money than they gain. But that wasn't the case later in the first season. After they expressed an interest in a particular storage bin, Brandy and Jared uncovered a collection of classic toys that netted them a $12,800 profit. Not bad for the underdogs. Oh my god, you're in the game. How am I in the game? We just doubled our profit. Shut up. Yep. We're in the yo-yo business for sure. Oh my God, we Another big find for Hester came when he employed his acting skills to discourage anyone else from bidding on a unit that he felt good about. A peek at the locker revealed that it was filled with brand new vending machines. He ranted about how worthless the unit was until the other buyers lost interest. He snagged it for $1,300 and sold the machines for a nearly $28,000 profit. To sit there and let a deal like this go Did away. Did you see one like visible? They were all visible. They're, They're right in front of you. Either you're lazy or you're not intelligent enough or you're, or you're just. Season 3's finale saw the show's biggest find to date. Daryl Sheets, known to the public as The Gambler, bid $3,600 on a locker because he liked the look of some of the artwork inside. After a little research, the artwork turned out to be original paintings by Frank Gutierrez. Much to everyone's disbelief, the lot turned out to be valued at more than $300,000. Sheets said he spoke with Gutierrez, who actually owned the storage unit, and was nice enough to return some of the artist's personal items, except for the paintings. You have maybe about 300,000. Congratulations. Hold on just a minute. 300. Season 4's opener was a happy one for Barry Weiss. He dropped $1,700 on a shabby storage unit filled with car and motorcycle parts that netted him just over $10,000 worth of profit. That's one way of starting off the season with a bang, especially since Barry would not return the next season. $10,000? Yen or dollars? Dollars. All right, all right, just check. Yeah. 10 grand? Yeah. 
The most compelling Storage Wars related find took place back in 2011 when a private buyer used Dan and Laura Dotson's American Auctioneer Service to bid $1,000 on a unit without having any idea what was inside. Upon investigation, the buyer came across a box that was so heavy that it took three people to move it out of the unit. Eight pieces of Spanish gold, dating back to the 16th century. Upon appraisal, the cash was said to be valued at just over $500,000. His findings weren't aired on television as he wished to be anonymous, but can you imagine how envious the show's regular buyers must have been? Uh, yes, they did. You know, between the 16th and the 19th century, this was something that was used through world trade and the mariners, and they call it the pirate booty, I think, because a lot... Picture this, you purchase a storage unit for $500, and inside, find a safe containing $7.5 million in cash. Do you return the money to the original owner, or keep it for yourself? That's precisely the scenario one man found himself in after obtaining a unit auctioned off by Dan Dotson. After discovering their storage shed had been sold, the original owners had their attorney reach out to offer the new owners a deal, $600,000 to give the money back. Eventually, the new owners settled on an increased cut of $1.2 million in exchange for the return, meaning everyone walked away a winner. And, uh, you know, a lot of money like that would motivate a lot of people. And I don't know why, I don't think you would forget that you have, you know, seven and a half million dollars inside of a unit. I don't think you'd forget it, but maybe. And that's it for today's list. What would you do if you hit a jackpot with an old storage container? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, leave this video a like and subscribe for more videos. We thank you and we'll see you in the next one.